So the Detroit Lions are supposed to have, I believe, four OTAs left, uh, but now they have three. And I would love to do another video on uh, what players are standing out. We did one yesterday about which players I think actually could earn a starting role that are kind of unexpected. Um, one was hoped for. But anyways, with all that being said, the Lions, we have found out, have been punished. They have been punished after found violating OTA rules. Now, it was made evident um, on Friday evening, the organization was made aware by the NFL and NFLPA that organized team activities, OTA practices held the week of May 27, violated player work rules pertaining to on-field physical t contact pursuant to the collective bargaining agreement. The Lions statement read, as a result, the team's OTA practice scheduled for Monday, June 10, has been forfeited. We take very seriously the rules set forth within the NFL's offseason program and have worked to conduct our practices accordingly. We will continue to be vigilant with our practices moving forward. All right, just to be clear, just to be clear, this statement says that the Lions don't believe that they actually violated the rules. Um, that is what I read in that. Dan Campbell went on to say a couple of things. He said, I think that we'll do an offense and defense of special teams on Tuesday, and then we're just going to have them work with Lions Director of Sports Performance, Mike Clark, and Head Strength and Conditioning Coach, Josh Schuler, and those guys in the weight room, Campbell said. So a lot of it is you can't do full team. We're going to cut most of the vets loose when we don't have enough, but we'll still get good work, fundamentals, individuals. You know, it's still a chance to develop. So that's kind of what next week has gone into. Now, here's the question. Is it fair? Is it fair? Um, Mike Florio, absolutely um, a good author, came out this morning early in the morning, and published an article on NBC Sports on Pro Football Talk where he talked about what just happened to the Detroit Lions. So I am going to go kind of through that, and I am going to let you make a decision on what you think because this isn't just me, little local guy over on the west side of the state that wasn't able to see the practices, that I'm not talking to the people in the know. I'm just reading about what the people in the know have to say. All right, it says Detroit lost its final OTA session for having too much contact during offseason work. Of course, any contact is too much contact, but pretty much every team has at least some prohibited contact during offseason workouts. I mean, pausing away from the article, I mean, it is football, right? Like, we're still playing football, so there has to be some contact. Otherwise, how are we hearing about... Um, Betts and um, Levi Onuzurike and all these guys looking so good. If there's no contact, just they look stronger hitting the sled. I mean, come on. He goes, why else would teams like the Rams have players in red, no contact jerseys during OTAs? In the offseason, every jersey is a red jersey in theory. So why would you have to continue? So there's no way. Here's what he said. There's no way it's only the Lions. So we're going to get back to this in a second. But what? Like Detroit versus everybody, right? Like sometimes I get frustrated on certain things. I feel like the Lions are taking the next step. And maybe this is simply, hey, Dan Campbell has been doing this. And now that we're in the spotlight, it's like, dude, no, you can't do that anymore. And maybe that's what's going on is now that you're in the spotlight, there's a bigger magnifying glass on you. And the stuff that you used to be able to get away with you no longer can. I will leave room for that. I will leave room for that. But Florio went on to say, the question becomes whether the NFL and the NFL PA are aggressively policing the situation. They apparently aren't, or there'd be more punishments. Florio's basically saying every team would be um would have the same problem. Typically, the league and or the union get involved when a player complains or when reports emerge of a scuffle during offseason work. As the Lions, as to the Lions, the fact that linebacker germ, Jalen Reeves-Maben, 
also serves as the new NFLPA president, raised the possible possibility that he blew the whistle. Love what he said after this, which he absolutely should do if the rules are being broken. But they're surely being broken everywhere. All right, we're going to get back to that in a second. Here's my question. Where do you fall on this? Like, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go different. I'm gonna take it away from football for a second. First, give me your thing. Is this just a witch hunt, or do the Lions deserve to be punished? I kind of wonder. I kind of wonder if this is kind of like the the kid who has hides the alcohol in the Beanie Baby drawer, right? Like that that ages me, right? But I wonder if it's the kid who hides something they shouldn't have in the underwear drawer and then when the mom or dad go in the bedroom and they look through it because they're trying to make sure their kid's not hiding anything, right, and they find it, then the kid thinks they have the right to get mad because the parents had no right to their privacy. What side of the fence do you fall on on that? See, I fall on the side of, what are you talking about? They're in the parent's house. The parent absolutely has the right to look through that bedroom any time that they want, right? And if there was something found that the child should not have, whether they're in elementary school, middle school, or high school, right? If something is found that they're not allowed to have in that home that is illegal or immoral, then the parent has every right to look and they are justified, especially when they find it. So if I fall on that side at home, then naturally I should fall on the side of, hey, if the Detroit Lions were breaking the rules, they deserve to get punished. And it doesn't matter if it's Jalen Reeves-Mabin, who is the whistleblower. It doesn't matter if it was another player. It doesn't matter if it was multiple players going to Jalen Reeves-Mabin and his role as NFLPA president required him to um, blow the whistle. Like, if you aren't doing the right thing, you have to, and you get caught, you deserve the punishment. Now, it's not like we're losing a practice in the middle of weeks be- between games. It's not like we're losing a practice during training camp, which is much more important. All right? We are losing an OTA where the veterans aren't even there. And I think that's kind of the unique part of this. Veterans are already going to go home. So at these OTAs, you're mostly going to be the younger players, right? The rookies and the training camp players, to be honest. So it kind of stinks because that's the time where you continue to install a lot of stuff so that they know exactly what it looks like to get ready for training camp to have a fair shake um, at making the roster and helping the team be in its highest competitive mode. So you saw the title talking about, you know, the NFL, are the Lions still getting unfair treatment, all that kind of stuff. But I don't know that they did. I think they got caught doing something wrong, and they got punished for it. Maybe the other 31 teams do the same thing wrong. Not going to argue it. All right, in Florio's article, he said, do you think the Chargers haven't been attacking every OTA with the enthusiasm unknown to mankind? All right, nice little Harbaugh shot there. Right? I'm sure they have. I'm sure that they have. And here's the fact. Whether all 32 teams are doing it or not, there's still a rule. There it is. All right. Let me know what your thought processes are on it, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.